Hello, let us explain the development of the ear. If we would make a suction through the embryonic head, in the region of the rump encephalon that is still invaginating during the neurulation, we would notice that on the level of the rump encephalon there is a thickening of the surface head epithelium here. I will add some more structures to elucidate the context. This will be the cranial part of the nodal cord. This will be the paired dorsal aorta and this will be the pharynx. So this is the rhombens rhombencephalic region. Let us say day 22. Here is the neurulation in progress. And this thickening of the, sur of the uh, surface head ectoderm is called the otic placode. The word placode in this context means thickening of the surface ectoderm. This is the nodal cord, the paired dorsal aorta. and the pharynx. The placode invaginates, so it will become a pit so after the new relation is completed This is the invaginating otic pit. This will be the rhomb encephalon. On the day twenty-seven, and finally after completing the invagination and let me again draw only half of the head because the the other half would be completely symmetrical we can see the surface head ectoderm below there is the rump encephalon here's the midline okay or the median uh, plane and the in completely invaginated vesicle called um, otic vesicle or autocyst. It's accompanied by two ganglia, the vestibular and the cochlear ganglion. This is one of these aortic arches. This is the notal cord and the pharynx sends a a blindly ending uh, process called the tubo tympanic process. Yeah, here will be the symmetrical other half. So we got this is the fifth week. This is the rump encephalon. This is the fully invaginated otic vesicle. Also known as the autocyst. 
and that will become the inner ear, the membranaceous labyrinth of the inner ear, right? The T ganglia, the vestibular for perceiving the balance, and the cochlear ganglion to perceive the hearing sense. The nova cord, the aorta, which is paired at this level, the pharynx, sending an entrodermal process called the tubo tympanic process to this region. Later on, in the seventh week, a transversal section through the head would demonstrate, would show, would show this. The ectoderm forms uh, an invagination here. Here will be the neck, okay? This would be the rump encephalon. Again, I will draw only the half of the reality. And the orthocyst would became would would, would become uh, would differentiate into the membranaceous labyrinth. So we got the endolymphatic duct here, the utricle and the saccule, and the cochlear, the cochlear projection. The mesenchyma here is condensing and it's the mesenchyma of uh, the first and second pharyngeal arch. We will talk about pharyngeal arches in the future. So it's part of the mesenchyma of the head and neck region. The pharynx is sending the tubotymponic process which comes closer to this future middle ear mesenchyma. And here is the pharynx. So the rhombencephalon has the same. Uh, this is uh, a developmental stage of the membranaceous labyrinth, so the endolymphatic duct the utricle the saccu the future vesicles of the of the vestibular organ this is a condensation of mesenchyma condensed mesenchyma of the first and second pharyngeal arches. This is the pharynx and this is the tubotympanic process. It grows this way. This is the ectodermal first pharyngeal class because this is the head ectoderm. But on this level, the ectoderm is invaginating. Okay, so this is it's called the first pharyngeal cleft. And finally, it starts to resemble the, the final anatomy of, of, of the ear. So the ectoderm 
is here invaginating into the first pharyngeal cleft, which becomes the external auditory meatus that ends with the eardrum. Now here the the pharynx is connected via the auditory tube with the middle ear cavity That comprises structures that uh, evolved from this uh, mesenchyma of the first and second pharyngeal arches. These are the auditory ossicles, namely the malleus, with the manubrium, with the head, then the incus. and the stuppies. Now the basal plate of the stuppies fits the oval window of the membranaceous labyrinth of the inner ear. Right? So let's label the structures. This uh, will be the external auditory meatus. Which ends with the eardrum. So from outside, the eardrum is lined with the ectoderm. From the inner side, there is this endoderm. Why? Because it's the pharynx, the epithelium from the pharynx, that is lining also the auditory tube. And the and the uh, tympanic cavity. In reality, it's much more complicated. A significant part of the tympanic cavity is lined with cells derived from the neural crest, but that's not the interest here now. The tympanic cavity contains the auditory ossicles, namely the mallows and the incus, that have uh, developed from the mesenchyma of the first pharyngeal arch. while the third ossicle, the stuppies, has a different origin. It's from the mesenchyma of the second pharyngeal arch. And the basis fits in the oval window. This is already a wall of the inner ear, so it's the of the inner ear, which came from this, which came from the otic vesicle, which started as the otic placode and moved deeply in the in, in inside the head. So the ectoderm is pretty much close to the endoderm. In the eardrum there is a thin layer of connective tissue separating these two these two layers. The eardrum is th also called the tympanic membrane, right? These projections are the audi auditory hillocks
sorry, not auditory, auricular. They are above and below the external auditory meatus. There are three pairs originally of these, but they fuse to form the auricle, the pinna, the external ear. Hence the, uh, the morphological variability of the pinna, which, origins, uh, which originates by fusion of the three pairs of auricular hillocks.